Hi, this is David. In the last video, I talked about Azure monitoring and I showed you how to create an application inside of Azure monitors application insights. Really quickly, I'll just go to the Azure portal. I already logged in, go to application insights, and this is the application I created inside of application insights. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to connect to this using your various Azure services that you create. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new web app. And I have a video on how to create a web app. I'm not going to dive into that so much as once I start to create it, there's all this stuff here. I'll put it into my same resource group and give this a name. Etc. This is basic stuff that I've covered in other videos, but what I want to talk about is that you notice at the top, this is a tabbed interface here, and I can click on tabs this way, or I can click on this button to advance to the next tab, either one. The thing that I'm most interested in is this, the application insights. It's turned on by default. You can turn it off. You can turn it back on again. Uh, it's significant that you have to have at least, I think it's the standard um, app service tier so uh in order for this to be enabled if you see it disabled that's probably why uh, although i did notice a bug that sometimes is disabled because i'm clicking around in the wrong order and i have to just refresh and start over again anyway what i want to do is i can create a new application insights here or which is what it wants to do by default or i can just select the one that i have so either one is correct I like to select the same one for related services, so everything is going into the same place. If I create new right here, I give it a name, a region, and a workspace like that. But as I said, I want to create the one that I created earlier. I don't have the choice of where it is. It's already been defined as in the East US. And when I go to review and create, it just validates that everything is here and I can hit create. And now I have this application it's logging some things into application insights and it's connected that i can also create code to uh, log there as well which i'll cover in a later video all right well that's deploying i'll also show you creating an azure function or a function app right here and again i have a video already showing you how to do this so i'll just really quickly select the things in here this is Give it a name, tell it, yeah, I'm doing .NET 6 is LTS. That's blah, blah, that's good, that's fine, that's fine. And I'm not really worried about it. But this also has the same tab interface. <clears throat> and under monitoring, again, by default, I say yes, and it'll, it wants to create a new application, Insights application, but what I really want to do is put it to the one that I already have. So things are going to the same thing. Everything looks good there. Click create. I'll let that go. The final thing I'm going to show you is how to configure Azure Application Insights for an Azure virtual machine. When I create a new virtual machine right here, and I have a video to do this. You can watch that if you want to. I'll, I'll just go through it quickly here. I'll put it in the same resource group. I'll call it GCAST uh, App in VM. And let's make this, I think if all the defaults here will be fine. I'll make myself the admin and I've got a secure password over that I'll just copy from my other screen. Right there, I think everything else is good. You notice that there's a tabbed interface up here and this also has the monitoring tab. Uh, by default, it enables Boot diagnostics. And this is useful information for when the virtual machine fails to boot up at all. In that case, you can uh, uh, look in the logs and see what was the reason that caused uh, it to fail to boot. boot. But it can also turn on some alerts. And checking that box brings up this dialog right here. We're going to cover alerts in more detail in a later video. But essentially, what happens is when some uh, metric gets hit, when some condition gets hit, such as the percentage of the CPU is greater than 80%, that might indicate a problem or a potential problem, and we're going to notify somebody. By email, by default, I'll just go to email to, to me. Um, uh, you can also have it specify to a, uh, 
push to a mobile application and other things here. And you can also expand these and tell it, you know, uh, give it a, a name or specify whether this is just informational or is it a critical error error. So when they get the email, they'll have some, I, some clue as to, you know, how important is it? How quickly do I need to respond? Things like that. And also, if I don't care about that, I can just uh, clear some of these things as well. If that's not something I care about. And click on save like that. And then finally down at the bottom here, there's some guest diagnostics. This is just automatically put information about the operating system itself and store it into an Azure storage account. Click on review and create. It'll tell me it says it was failed something here. I'm not sure what that failed. Let me go back to here and that looks fine. Go to the basics. I don't see any problems there. Let me go back. Sometimes there's a false negative and it was it did validation pass. So I was doing everything correctly. It was just trying to be mean to me. Anyway, this will take a few minutes. I'm not going to stand sit here and make you wait for that. But in this video, I've shown you how to configure monitoring when creating an Azure app service, an Azure function, and an Azure virtual machine. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.